Meters and data logging systems will give you a direct measurement of your energy use, but realistically you can't measure everything. For some sites they have many switchboards and many circuits to identify, so it might be better just to go back to the, the main distribution board and say, okay, we're going to log this here and we're going to make some assumptions about where that goes and how it's being used. So either way, you still need to make some calculations and extrapolate out from that uh, to get an overall picture uh, that matches the billing data. So we could understand from our power bill what our peak load was, but we didn't have any clarity on exactly what was contributing to that load on a day-by-day -day basis. So we're able to connect load reading devices to the switchboard and individual machines. So we were able to see, I guess, in terms of the overall demand, which machines were con contributing the most. Simple calculations will often be enough to see where the big energy use is and to see whether your changes make a difference. This piece of equipment is rated at this many kilowatt hours. We use it this many hours a day for this many days a year. You can factor in more details about the energy system and the calculations become more complex. These are often called energy balancing and can be used to calculate how much energy is being used or wasted. Various levels of complexity with energy balancing. A very simple example might be to look at uh, halogen light and think about the nominal light power that's, or lamp power that it's using. So for example, with most halogens, it's 50 watts. Then you've got the transformer, which uses a certain amount of power, usually about 12 watts. And then you've got the wiring losses going back to the circuit that it's coming from. They all go towards producing the end product, which is light. So for example, if I had a halogen light that using 50 watts and the transformer as well using 12 watts, and then I change that over to an LED lamp, which is only using between eight and 12 watts, and I bypass the transformer completely, then I've already made a big saving there. And what I can do is very simply model that and say, okay, I've got a certain amount of volts coming through here and amps and the current's coming in. I've transformed that into the lumens, the light power that I'm using through the wiring and the transformers and the light itself. So changing that to a more energy efficient model, I'm being able to bypass those losses from the transformer. So with the halogen lights, they need to transform from the 240 volts to 12 volts. There's heat loss in there, that's energy being lost. Whereas if I bypass those transformers, then I'm having more direct impact in terms of the energy use going to the light and less loss in heat. Now you can go to a lot more complex levels of energy balancing. To use the example of the gas-fired oven, you've got to take into account a lot of other factors of thermal energy going in and going out and where the losses are. So that involves a lot more detailed measurement and modelling. Energy bills are a good source of data but typically they cover a whole building or site. Furniture Concepts set up logbooks so they could track their energy use in more detail. We had an old forklift, it was leaking gas. Because all the gas used to be under one account, nobody noticed anything. We just knew we were using lots of, of gas, but nobody could pinpoint. Once we actually worked out which forklift is using how much gas, certainly we realised, well hang on, this forklift is driving roughly the same time as the other forklift, but it's using double the consumption of gas. There must be something wrong. Many of these skills are reflected in the energy efficiency skill sets in the MSS11 Sustainability Training Package. For more information and additional resources, visit sustainabilityskills.net.au.